last days. We better believe it. We better understand it. And I want to speak to us from Romans chapter 13, verse 11. Paul gave us some instruction, some very good advice about being prepared for the return of the Lord. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. He says, And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. My topic tonight is make not provision for the flesh. If you want to make it to glory, we better get this flesh out of the way. My biggest obstacle in life right now it's not that one that despitefully uses me or the sinner out there trying to get me hooked on drugs or nothing else. But the flesh, the desires, the always after you to you need this, you ought to try this. You, listen, if I can overcome Clint... If I can overcome Clint, I'm, I'll probably overcome this world. He says, knowing the time that now it is high time. We need to know what time of life we're living in. We need to know it without a doubt. We need to understand and have enough spiritual insight to discern the return of the Lord is not at hand. Amen. It's, he says, knowing the time that it's high time. Now, knowing the time, it's high time. For, this means it is the day and hour that you and I are living in is an exact time. It is an appointed time. And we must realize we're running out of what? Time. You don't have to be 95 to be running out of time. Mm -hmm. You and I, everyone that is under the sound of my voice, listen, you're running out of time. Mm -hmm. There is no time to put off time. But Paul says, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Listen. He's talking about a spiritual condition. To be spiritually asleep. Not fully comprehending the very hour that we're living in. It is a state of being desensitized to the Spirit of God. He says it's high time. It's right now is the time to awake out of this condition. He says, for now, right now, is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Don't take a rocket scientist to figure that out, does it? Our salvation is nearer. What are you talking about? It's closer. The return of the Lord is nigh at hand. The grace dispensation is about to be closed out. Hmm. I looked out my window, sitting at my desk, getting this message together this week. I looked out my window, and the beautiful flowers and all of the green leaves. A few weeks ago, you couldn't hardly see my neighbor next door, and 
the street behind us, all those houses, you couldn't hardly, but now there's nothing there. And you can see way houses everywhere. What does that say to us? Hmm? Well, if you've lived very long at all, you know summer is gone. You know fall is about gone. Everything's failed. That means fall's about over. <laughs> but what's it saying to a winter is on us. And I thought, you know, the Bible talks about we can discern all these things. But what about the spiritual man? What about what God is trying to get us to see before it's everlasting too late? We're running out of time. We're living in an appointed time, which is the return of the Lord. It says the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Listen, this is making reference to all of the thousands of years that Christ has went away and been gone. 2,000 years now, Christ has been gone from this earth, but Paul says night is far spent. Huh. It's also referring to your life, everything that is behind you. Night is far spent. The Bible tells us that this life is no more than a vapor. Here for a little while and how quick it vanisheth away. You know, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. We've, we've got to come to the realization. Some people think that we have lived all these years and not a shadow of a doubt we'll live tomorrow. The sun will come up tomorrow and we'll live on tomorrow. I've got faith in that. Do you? But listen, Paul says the day is at hand. This appointed time is the dawning of the day of the Lord and his return. It is nigh at hand. We need to understand that. We're living in the last hours. He goes on and says, cast, let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Listen, we better be looking in our lives Everything that looks like Christ, talks like Christ, walks like Christ, identifies us as children of the light, we better be putting it on. We better uh, separate ourselves from this world. We better let this world know that we know what time it is. Somebody needs to know the Lord is soon returning. Put on the armor of light. Not those things, look in verse 13, it says, Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, hmm? not in a, not in a care, careless life, rioting, drunkenness, not being intoxicated on this world, not in chambering and wantonness, enjoying the lust and the desires of this life. Hmm. Not in strife and envying. Listen, we got no time for strife. We're, wouldn't it be awful to be in the middle of some kind of strife and the Lord return? We got no time for that. We're running out of time. Do we really know what time it is? Not in those things. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provisions for the flesh. Listen, if we're not careful, the flesh is going to get us in trouble. Let me say that again. If we're not careful, the flesh will get us in trouble. It will cause us to miss out on the return of the Lord. Make not provision for the flesh. Avoid this temptation. Avoid anything that the devil brings unto you that would cause you 
to look at the desires of this flesh more than the spiritual desires that we need to be looking at. Make not provision. Avoid this. Don't look for opportunities to satisfy the desires or needs of the flesh. Hmm? <clears throat> Don't look for those opportunities. And let me tell you, you won't have to look far. The devil's going to present it to you. But don't look for those opportunities to, to satisfy the desires of the flesh. But seek opportunity to manifest the spirit of the Lord that is within you. Amen. Look for opportunity to let your neighbor know, I'm a Christian. To let that one on the job place know, I'm a Christian. Make not provision for the flesh. Listen, this definition of provision, we need to understand this right here. Make not provision, it means to give forethought. You know, a lot of people give a lot of thought to what this flesh desires. And they see to it, they make plans that the desire is fulfilled. That's what provision means. You, somebody's given forethought somewhere. Have not forethought for providential care to supply, to set aside in advance for a known liability. Hmm. When you make provision, you give forethought to something and you set aside something in advance for a liability that you know is coming up there. That's what provision means. I mean, how many has the Lord ever made provision in your life? That's, that's what he's done. He, he has given forethought and he knowed what was coming and he's provided it before it got here and you would have it. Paul said, make not provision for the flesh. Hmm. So what that means is he's encouraging us, don't, don't give too much forethought on what this flesh right here wants. You know, some people spend the biggest part of their day scheming and conniving and working to make sure they achieve what they want to achieve. Let me tell you something. That kind of attitude, that kind of spirit will draw you away from the Spirit of God and all of your focus will be on the flesh. Paul gives us warning about that. Listen, it is a natural human instinct to make provision for the flesh, right? It's a natural human instinct for me to know what I would like and for me to take steps to make sure that is accomplished. That's a natural human instinct. But it's a non-spiritual condition, right? Look with me in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. We better realize, we better get our priorities right whom we are serving, and whom we desire to serve. If we put too much focus on one, it's going to draw us away from the other. If we put too much desire on this one, it's going to draw us away from here. Hmm. No man can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Now listen, these are Jesus' words here. Paul simply said, you know, make not provision for the flesh. Jesus, oh, he went a little further, didn't he? He said, take no thought. 
concerning these necessities, what we uh, categorize as necessities in this life. Brother Pulliam, you have to plan ahead. You have to, you, you know, you have to work, you have to labor, you have to, I know all of that. I'm trying to get us to look at the spiritual side of it. The Apostle Paul, now here the Son of God, is telling us we need to be careful about our thoughts, about what we put emphasis on. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his statue? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But, listen, listen to what Jesus says here. Now he's encouraging us here, we, we need to get our thinking wrong right. You know, so, so many times people put so much emphasis on this flesh, what we desire, even down to what we need, and we focus Focus, focus, and the whole time the spiritual man's going lacking. But Jesus says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Let me tell you something. We spend so much time today worrying about tomorrow and the spiritual man goes lacking. And you know what? When you get to tomorrow, you face things that you wasn't even aware of yesterday. The Bible says sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. What's that mean? Tomorrow you're going to have another need you don't even know about yet. And the next day, and the next day, it's never going to cease. If you spend enough time on this flesh and the desires of this flesh, you won't have time to do nothing else. Jesus was trying to get our attention here by saying, take no thought. Seek first the kingdom of God. Listen, there's going to be people lose out with God at the very last hour just before his return because... They're focusing too much on flesh and what they feel like they need, they want, they desire, and they're working to get that when the Spirit of God is trying to draw them and they have no time because they're trying to satisfy the flesh. Galatians chapter 5, <clears throat> verse 16. Now, Paul was... Paul was so good at giving us advice. He started out here tonight in Romans and he says, make not provision for the flesh. The flesh he's trying to tell us the flesh is going to give you problem. He's trying to, he's trying to tell us, you know, make, don't, don't give in to the flesh. Don't, don't make no provision for the flesh. No matter what he wants, don't give in to him. Listen here, verse 16. This I say then, Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Huh. Listen, so many people, they, 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 they're right on the borderline. They, they know where Satan's got them, and they're fighting the flesh, and they know that. Paul says, walk in the Spirit. Huh? Seek 
the Lord. Find a place that you can get along with God and allow God to lead you and walk in the Spirit. That's the only way you'll ever overcome the flesh. Walk in the Spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Hmm. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of thee which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Listen, if you focus too much on this flesh right here, he's going to get you in trouble. We just read the, the works of the flesh. He's not going to be satisfied with, with, with you just feeding him a little bit. But if you're not careful and you, you, you give heed to the flesh and you begin to make provision for the flesh, oh, he's going to turn into a monster. And the first thing you know, you won't be able to feed him enough. Hmm? You ever seen a dog start out, you, you feed him about that much, and in a few weeks you're, you're feeding him this much, and, and then the first thing you know, he's eating a pan like this every day. Well, let me tell you something. The more you feed that dog, the more he's going to eat. Yeah. He'll eat the whole bag in one day if you set it before him. That's the way flesh is. Hmm? Listen to the works again. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance. Listen, we go on and on. The flesh is always going to have something he's desiring. And if we begin to make provision for him in this one little area and satisfy him, if we give forethought and we work to make provision to satisfy this, the next thing you know, he's going to... Be desiring something greater and then something greater. We've all heard the old saying, sin, take you further than you want to go. Well, that's, that's flesh. It starts out just, just making provision for the flesh. Peter said in one place, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. He says, abstain from fleshly lust." which war against the soul. Listen, you can't afford to make provision for the flesh because he's warring against your soul. He, he, he's, he, he's, not, he's not just in it for himself. He's warring against your soul. He's an instrument of the devil himself. Listen, I don't have to worry about one of you causing me to do something wrong. My, my biggest concern is that I don't cause me to do something wrong. Amen. You know, because he's on my case a whole lot more than you're on my case. Yeah. Hmm? If we be honest, every one of us would say, Brother Pulliam, I know what you mean. Amen. Listen, we, we, we read about it this morning. David was honest enough he was man enough. He, you know, he, he said, Lord, we're, we're talking about my faults, my sin. Peter goes on another place. He says, we should no longer live the rest of our time. This is beautiful. I believe it's in 1 Peter 4 and 2. That, that you, should live, you should no longer live the rest of your time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. Now listen, what's he saying here? We're, we're as children of God. We, we don't have to live out the rest of our time on this earth. How many ever gets tired of fighting flesh? Hmm? Oh, he sticks his ugly head up all the time, don't he? 
Yeah. Peter said, look, don't, don't spend the rest of your time. You know, make no provision for the flesh. Don't give him an inch in your life. Uh, he's going he's gonna to keep on until it becomes an ugly, ugly issue. Paul said, <clears throat> I shared this scripture this morning. When I read it this morning, I, I was almost confused. I thought, I, I thought that goes with the message tonight. Well, it does. It went with this morning. Now I'm going to share it again. But Paul said, I bring this body into subjection. Now, what was he talking about, flesh? He said, I, I bring it into subjection. I say to Paul, look, son, you're not going to do that. I'm going to bring you into subjection. Well, God help us. Thank the Lord for the word. Listen, some are afraid of losing the battle against the flesh. I want you to listen to what I'm saying. Some people are afraid of losing the battle against the flesh. I got a phone call the other night, a man in this area right here. And I was on the phone with him an hour and a half. And I listened to him and I talked with him. He cried and I cried and I tried to compel him to give his life to God. You know what's in his way? And he was honest with me and told me. Flesh. There's a monster in his way. It ain't me. It ain't the preacher. It ain't the overseers. Not, not any. You know who it is? Flesh. He feels certain that he cannot live without sin in his life. I could not compel him to let me pray with him to be saved. He knows, he said, I know the Lord can save me and will save me, but I can't live the life. Isn't that sad? Isn't that sad to know flesh has him bound so strong, Brother Nick, that he, he just don't see that he can live? Well... We better take heed to the word of God. Don't make not provision. Make not provision for the flesh. You know what Paul was saying when he said that? You know what the little word not means, N-O-T, not? <laughs> I loved it. When you look at, on a scale, a number scale, and when you look at zero, not means negative. <laughs> When you think, I've, I make none, I make no provision for the flesh, Paul was saying, make not. Oh, we're going to have to go farther than that. We're going to have to realize not one little iota can we allow the flesh in our lives. Make not provision. Less than nothing is how much of the flesh we can afford to operate in our lives. There is a sanctifying power. Can you say praise the Lord with me? Amen. Praise the Lord for sanctification. Amen. Listen, the flesh has many people bound even to the point that they know they need to be saved and got faith in God that He will save them, but they're afraid what comes next that they know they can't live. This young man said, I've been saved, sanctified, and I cannot live, well, let me tell you something. A sanctifying life, it will allow you to live without sin in your life. Are you going to have trouble with the flesh? Yes, you will. He's going to stick his ugly head up. But listen, there's only one thing that will give you power in your life to overcome the flesh. That's the sanctifying blood of Jesus. And it will do it. Listen, 
Look with me in Romans chapter 7, verse 23. Let's listen to Paul again. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Listen, O wretched man that I am, you begin to make provision for the flesh and you're going to become a wretched, wretched person. Hmm? Hopeless, helpless, and there is nothing in this world that you can do to overcome that short of the sanctifying power of the blood of the Lamb of God. Paul he reminisced about a time that he had no hope. He was fighting this battle. Listen, the flesh is at war with your soul. He said, Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. He's the one. All we've got to do is resist the flesh. Pray and be sanctified by the blood of the Lord and allow God to use you and make no, not provision for the flesh. If you open the door and allow flesh to get his little pinky toe in, he will break that door down with you behind it and he will take over your life. But listen, 2 Timothy 1 and 12, Paul says, I know. Isn't, isn't this beautiful? I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Huh? The hour that we're living in, you better know that you know that you know that your life has been committed unto the Lord and you have the confidence that Paul had. He says, I am persuaded. I know whom I have believed and am persuaded. He is able. He is able. Can you say it with me? He is able. Listen, make not provision for the flesh. Turn to the Lord. Every time you see the flesh creeping up on you, Turn to the Lord. Amen. Call on the Lord for his help, his spirit, and his direction. Don't, don't give the devil a foothold because he's going to take that foothold and he's going to destroy us. <coughs> Knowing the time that we're living in, every one of us should be more mature in the Lord than to allow flesh to creep up in our lives. We know too much. We've been preached too much. We've been taught too much. The Lord has helped us too many times. Wouldn't it be sad to miss out and to stand before God and know I'm the reason that I missed out? That's going to be sad. Isn't it? Stand with me if you will. I want to give you an opportunity to pray.